How's it all going? This is Dan, aka Ducky, and welcome to Brothers and Us. A couple of weeks ago, my brother did the unboxing of the Black Magic Design Intensity Shuttle. You can go to check that video out if you haven't already. But today, I'm going to do an in depth look at the hardware and the software side of things, and I'll show you how to set it up and talk about a few bits and bobs about the device itself. So, this is the device here. It's a nice, sleek looking thing. It's pretty indiscreet. Uh, I know some people would have preferred to have a black version, whether glossy or matte. Uh, because that fits in better with their current hardware or is a bit more discreet, but unfortunately it only comes in white. Now this is the USB 3 version, so predominantly built for PC users. There is a lightning bolt version for Mac users, but I believe that both versions of the hardware can work on both PC and Mac. They have drivers for lightning bolt for PC, and they have drivers for the USB 3 um, on Mac. Uh, Along the bottom here, we've got the inputs, and along the top, we've got the outputs, which is basically the pass-through, or what is called a pass-through, um, and it's basically mirrored, so what's on the input is exactly the same on the outputs, and we have HDMI, component, S-video, and composite. You can see the ports there, these are the input ports, um, and you can see the outputs there, so you can see that's been mirrored. Uh, it's pretty, pretty basic stuff. Most of you would have probably seen these ports before, whether at the back of your TV or in other places. Um, but it's worth noting that there is no optical or coaxial audio, so you can't record from optical or coaxial audio sources if you need to. Um, that, 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 that's a minor, minor problem, I would say. I don't think there's that much demand for it and for such a low-cost device I mean this device really only, it only cost me 130 Australian dollars um, you, you can't really complain too much about that another thing to note which is really nice is if I'm using the composite audio um, it still comes out through the HDMI audio so I don't need to have composite audio hooked up uh, so that is very nice and yeah that's that's the hardware so what I'll do is I'll quickly show you how, how it all plugs up I've got my Surface Pro here just to show you that it does work with the Surface Pro. I've got my TV in the background and a PS2 and uh, I'll just plug this up right now. So I'll start off by plugging up the composite inputs. So that's the video, the left and the what right audio. Uh, it's all color coded, you've probably seen that before. But if you haven't seen it before, it's color coded so it's really easy to follow. I guess unless you're colorblind, I'm not sure if that would affect colorblind people. Um, I'm plugging the USB 3. Now it's USB 3 powered, so as soon as you plug that in, the device is powered. Uh, one thing I would say is it lacks any sort of indication that it is being properly powered. So it's kind of, a, yeah, kind of have to guess at it, but I suppose it's pretty reliable. I've never plugged it in and not have it powered or anything like that. So I, I don't think you really need to worry about it. It's really just a plug and play device. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about much of what going on, what goes on. Sorry. So once it's all plugged up, you're ready to go. I'm using HDMI out to my TV. Uh, I'm just going to turn on the PS2 and switch my TV input to the second HDMI. Now you'll notice that there is no image on the TV even though it's connected properly. Uh, that's because the pass-through actually doesn't activate until you have a capture program running and thankfully Blackmagic provide a free capture program which is called Media Express and I'll just start that up for you right now. You can get the Media Express from the CD or the DVD, sorry, that comes with the shuttle, or you can just go to blackmagicdesign.com and download it from there. I'll show more about the software side of things in the second part of this video, but for now, just want to show you how it all works after plugging it all up. And as you can see, it works perfectly. I'm using Media Express there. I had to click on the Login Capture tab to actually start the capture. Um, capture module in the program I guess you would call it and you can see that the pass-through is now showing the image on the TV and uh, showing the image on the software which means I can start capturing there's a little capture button down here if I tap on that and uh, it will show me that 
I'm now capturing using the animation. It will show me the duration and the disk space remaining, but I'll show you a more detailed look at that in a moment. So that's basically it for plugging it up. It's really easy. Uh, there's not much to it. Um, you don't really have to think about it as long as you get everything right with the plugs, uh, with all the inputs and cables and all that stuff. Uh, you should be right. The only thing I would say is that uh, it's a, it was a little bit tricky setting up the software and configuring the hardware via the control panel. So I'll show you that. Uh, actually, I'll just show you that now. But uh, but yeah, as you can see, it works great on the Surface Pro and Surface Pro One. So I'm pretty sure it should work on the Surface Pro Three if you have, if that's what you have, or maybe you have a Surface Pro Two. Uh, I think it's cool that it works on the Surface Pro. Uh, it means that you can go and capture video from sources wherever you go. Uh, one thing to note is that if I close the Media Express software since I'm not running a capture uh, capture software the the through the pass through sorry <laughs> stops working all right so now I'll go ahead and show you the software side of things alrighty now I'm going to show you guys how to set up the intensity shuttle on the software side of things so obviously the first thing you want to do is to get the uh, the software and the drivers for it you can do so by going to blackmagicdesign.com and just clicking on support and scrolling down to capture and playback scrolling down again under the left hand panel here you'll see latest downloads and you're looking for the desktop video uh, package and you don't want the Blackmagic Converters package as that won't work with the Intensity Shuttle uh, so yeah just click on the, the operating system that you want I'm using Windows so I'm going to click on Windows it may ask you for some details but only fill that out if you want to register your product if you don't want to register the product you can click on download only and it will just allow you to download the program without filling out the information once you've downloaded the program obviously just install it um, follow the prompts it should be really easy uh, you shouldn't have any trouble with that at all now the first instinct is to definitely go and try to run the the program itself which is the Blackmagic Media Express program uh, you don't want to do that first thing the first thing you need to do is actually to set up the the black uh, the sorry is to actually set up the intensity shuttle via the control panel now this isn't that well documented so if you look into the manual or look you look in the forums um, you might have, well I had some trouble finding the control panel it took me about an hour to do that uh, maybe that's, I, I blame it on the documentation but maybe that's just because I'm stupid who knows, that's for you to judge but um, it's worth noting that if you do a search for black magic in the, in the window search you only see the Blackmagic Media Express, the Live Key Multi Bridge Utility, and the Disk Speed Test programs coming up. You don't see a control panel coming up. So, what you actually need to do is actually go into the regular Windows control panel and just click on Hardware and Sound. Scrolling down, you'll see a Blackmagic Design control panel there. Um, and just click on that to set up your device. Now obviously make sure your device is plugged in before you run the control panel because if you don't plug in the device before running the control panel all these options will be grayed out and you won't be able to configure it. Now the most important thing in the control panel to configure is the set input function. Uh, so basically you just need to tell it whether you're using HDMI, component or composite inputs uh, now you can use HDMI video and analog RCA or you can use uh, component video and analog RCA for your audio or you can use S video and analog RCA audio uh, because I'm capturing from a PS2 I'm going to use composite video and analog RCA audio that's what I need to use there are some more advanced options down here for advanced users who want to get the best quality out of their capture but generally the defaults are fine uh, it's worth noting that under set default video standard as 
you can set the the default input that you'll be using I guess if you want to say that so if let's say you were capturing from another device that was 1080p uh, you would set your default video standard to a 1080p input here whether that's you'd have to suss out whether that's 30 frames per second 50 frames per second or 60 frames per second um, it's worth noting that you can't actually capture at 1080p at 60 frames a second uh, it only goes to 1080p 30 frames per second but that shouldn't be too much of a problem I mean if you're capturing from consoles anyway most console games don't run at 60 frames a second and you probably don't want to record video at 60 frames a second uh, because it's just not that compatible with other types of video if you're mixing video if you're editing different types of videos together and in general I mean I don't even I think YouTube does support 60 frames a second now but it's it's generally not a very widely used frame rate for video uh, down here below the line there are some further options for output and input processing basically you can up convert or down convert on a in limited fashion I suppose uh, you can read it for yourself and decide whether you need to use these or not I haven't found them to be that useful the options are quite limited uh, so I guess your mileage will vary there but basically the most important thing is to set your input if you don't set your input right you will not be able to see your image on the capture program and you might get frustrated and wonder why that's not working so once you've set your input correctly go and run the Blackmagic Media Express now Blackmagic do say that you can use basically any third party capture program so you can use Adobe Premiere Pro you can use Final Cut Pro you can use I think there's Sony Vegas or Avid uh, Avid um, yeah you can use any third party capture program so if you have a favorite capture program feel free to use that as well but I'll be showing you the Media Express program it's a it's a really basic program up here you have a monitor to see what's going on down here you have three tabs for the three different functions that you might want to perform through the program so playback just previews what you've captured logging capture uh, will allow you to start capturing and preview what you're capturing and edit to tape will allow you to export any video to a tape deck or a VTR um, so I'm mostly interested in playback and logging capture and that's what I'll show you uh, it's worth checking your preferences here because if your project video format is not the correct format in that it doesn't match your device's output uh, it's not going to be able to capture anything so for example I'm capturing from PS2 today which would be a PAL video format because I'm living in Australia and we have PAL devices not NTSC devices down here um, but if I was to capture from say another computer I, I would probably have to go with 1080p 30 frames a second or if I was capturing from my PS3 I'd probably have to go with 1080p 30 frames a second uh, but today I'm going to make sure it's set to PAL and that way I can be able to capture from my PS2 so I'm just going to turn the PS2 back on click on login capture and you can see it's it's appearing in the the monitor there uh, you have buttons down here one this button here is just to capture a single still frame from the video or you can click on capture here to actually capture video I'll just wait for the PS2 to boot and I'll show you how that works but in essence you get you get the idea on the right hand side here you can see the audio levels which is quite handy so at least you know that you are getting audio if you don't hear that on your TV or for some reason uh, so just clicking on capture again I, as I showed you before you can see the animation down here you can see the recording duration and the disk space remaining to stop recording or to stop capturing just click on capture again and you'll see the the clip appear there 
If you want to view the clip, just double click it and it will switch to playback automatically. So that's it for this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys found it useful. If you did, please like the video. Uh, if not, don't like the video, I guess. But please do leave a comment. Let, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to try and answer those for you. Um, but until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.